I'm Tim Janisewski. Welcome to today's Spotlight Matthew as we continue our deep dive into a devotional study of the first gospel. We're looking at a series of devotions that have to do with Jesus' ministry plan. Indeed, I hope we all believe that Jesus did have a ministry plan, and it has four components. First of all, Jesus had a target region, Galilee of the Gentiles in the north. Second, we then looked and saw that Jesus had a specific ministry tactic. His tactic was to proclaim the gospel of the kingdom and to follow that up with a second tactic, which was to show care and compassion by healing and taking care of the needs of people in difficult situations. Third, Jesus built a ministry team. We call them the 12 apostles as we looked at the call of the four fishermen apostles by the Sea of Galilee. And finally, we come to our final T, which is terminus or the results or the outcome of Jesus' ministry plan. And to read about what those results and outcomes were, we turn to Matthew chapter 4, and we begin in verse 23. And he, that is Jesus, went throughout all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom and healing every disease and every affliction among the people. See there, two, Jesus, two of Jesus' ministry tactics are uh, summarized in that one verse. Jesus was teaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every kind of disease among the people. And then we read in verse 24, And so his fame spread throughout all Syria, and they brought him all the sick and all those who were afflicted with various diseases and pains, and those oppressed by demons, epileptics and paralytics, and he healed them. And great crowds followed him from Galilee and the Decapolis and from Jerusalem and Judea and from beyond the Jordan. There are ministry results, aren't there, contained in our passage today. There are great crowds of people that are following Jesus. And though Jesus' ministry target is Galilee in the north near the Sea of Galilee, we hear in this passage that people are coming up from Jerusalem. Some are coming from Judea in the south. Still others are crossing the Jordan River to the east in uh, the cities of the Decapolis. Those are 10 cities on the eastern bank of the Jordan River and throughout the entire region of Syria. Jesus is making a tremendous impact. And Matthew, who writes about this, is not hesitant or shy to tell us what these ministry results look like. Well, maybe he shouldn't be shy because the ministry results are very, very good. And I think most of the time we are willing to share ministry results when things are happening in a positive way. We're getting more people coming to worship. Yay, let's talk about it. We're meeting the budget. Good, let's tell everyone about it. Our outreach to the community yielded responses. We are happy about that. But but sometimes we're a lot less hesitant in the church to talk about ministry results when difficulties arise and when the results statistically might not be so positive and glowing. And sometimes it turns into a case of feeling as though it's somehow unspiritual to look at the results, the terminus, the outcome of our ministry efforts. But I would say to us that this passage suggests to the contrary. Faithfulness calls us to look at these ministry results and to make a fair, clear-eyed uh, evaluation of what kind of results we are seeing. Well, how do we judge our results? There are two aspects to, I think, an appropriate biblical evaluation. First of all, is the ministry faithful? We have to be sure that what we are doing indeed is consonant with this gospel of Jesus Christ, this good news. It is faithful to the gospel of the kingdom. It's in accord with what scripture teaches in the Old and New Testament. We can ask ourselves the simple question, if Jesus were leading this ministry effort, would he approve? Would he support the way things are being done and what the agenda is for the ministry? And if we have any hesitation about what Jesus' opinion would have been, then maybe we need to do a little gut check on our faithfulness side of evaluation. 
But also along with faithfulness, I think Jesus would say that he is looking for fruitfulness. Fruitfulness. After all, Jesus did teach uh, that he called his disciples to bear good fruit and to bear much fruit in the Gospel of John chapter 15. And as we abide faithfully in Jesus, Jesus' call is for fruit bearing. And in fruit bearing, I think it can include numbers of people that are being reached to be sure. Secondarily, dollars raised are a part of fruit bearing, but, but those are not all the things that go into fruitfulness. What we really want to see is transformed and changed lives. We want to see people who come to follow Jesus, who are willing to be developed by Jesus, who are people who will then take action for Jesus and people who have an enthusiasm to be Jesus people, to be on Team Jesus as we saw in our last devotional. So let's be evaluating our fruitfulness in terms of those aspects. Do we see people following Jesus more closely? Are we seeing people willing to, to allow the master to make them new men and new women? Are they taking action, not simply sitting in the pews or in the chairs or, or receiving, but going out and making a kingdom impact? And is there a true enthusiasm, a joy and a love and a passion for being part of Jesus? agenda. Those are the kinds of things we should look for in terms of our fruitfulness. So let me ask, have you and your church, hope you're a member of a church, taken the time when it's doing a ministry to pause and ask God to show what the ministry terminus, the outcome is? How faithful has the ministry been and how fruitful and productive is it being for the kingdom and its purposes? Finally, let me encourage you to do the very same thing about your own personal life and your own ministries. How faithful are you being in following Jesus Christ? And again, doing the things that he calls you to do in ministry. And do the hard work of looking at the fruit bearing. If it's bearing good fruit, praise God, he may continue to use that ministry. But if it's no longer bearing fruit or just is not being productive for the kingdom, sometimes you got to prune off the limb and indeed introduce a new ministry and a new way of doing mission for Christ that will bear new fruit and better fruit. That's hard and painful, but you'll be glad that you did it, whether you're a church or an individual Christian. So what are the ministry results that you are seeing? What is the terminus? It's the last of the four steps in Jesus' ministry plan. He had a target, he had tactics, he built a team, and he looked at his terminus, his results, his outcomes. I recommend that to you in your own individual walk of faith, and I definitely recommend it as four points of consideration for any local church or Christian organization. So now take time, if you will, to reread and ask the Spirit to reveal to you what you need to know, and do not miss pausing in prayer, spending time with Christ today. I'm Tim Janisewski. Like us on Facebook and share us with others. Check us out, spotlightgoodnews.com, and we'll talk to you next time.